Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make a rigid percussion loop just a little bit more lazy and offbeat and interesting and more human feeling. So we're going to start with something that sounds like this. And end up with something that sounds a little bit more like this. All right, so let's dive right in. So I have a little uh, beat going here. And you can hear this percussion loop sounds cool, but it's just a little bit straight and rigid. And I've already sort of messed with this and pitched it up and things like that. It's a little too straight, so I'm going to try something here. So we're going to go to Instruments, bring in a new Simpler, and we're going to take um, a piece of that loop and bring it into the Simpler. And now we're just going to record uh, like a one one bar note of this loop into Simpler. Okay. just like that and quantize it and I'll just make it one bar so it's easy loop it alright so now we've basically got the same exact thing here in the simpler track as we do in the audio track uh, but now we can play with the simpler a little bit so it's how it should sound like this Okay, so we'll mute the original audio loop. And now when we go into Simpler, we can go to Controls. And what we're going to do is we're going to automate and play with the detune amount on the sample, which will cause, because it's a percussive loop, playing with the detune will cause this loop to slow down and speed up depending on if you're raising or lowering the detune amount because it's a, a one bar sample so if you slow it down a little bit it'll get a little behind the beat I'm sorry if you lower the detune amount it will get behind the beat and if you raise the detune amount it will get ahead of the beat so this is uh, you know it's pretty obvious in the in the case of transposition so if I raise this up one semitone it's going to be out of time with the rest of the song and won't sound very good. We'll listen to that now. Okay, so that's too much. If I lower it again, it's going to be too much. Way too, way too slow, right? But what we can do is we can play with the detune, which will goes from zero cents to 50, I think. Yeah, to 50 up and down so from negative 50 to 50 and that would be half a semitone so if we're playing within just that range of half a semitone below to half a semitone above it will sort of play with the groove of it but it won't be so extreme that it will sound too out of time so there are a few different ways to do this that are kind of fun one thing that you can do is map this parameter to one of your knobs on your MIDI keyboard you can hit command M to do some MIDI mapping. You can click on that parameter and then just change, uh, just tw tweak the knob on your keyboard, hit command M. And now this, uh, you can't see, but I'm moving the knob on my MIDI keyboard from left to right. And I could play this um, as I can record in the movement of my knob as the loop is playing to get a really sort of humanized natural feel. It would sound kind of like this. Right, that sounds kind of cool. It's a little more groovy and, and natural. So that's one way to do it. You can play it in. Or what we can do is automate this. So we can right click it, show automation in new lane, and it pops up here. And then I'm just going to make this bigger so we can see. 
Okay, so here's, let's set that to zero. So find the red line, so here's zero. So we can either draw something in, we can hit the letter B to bring up the pencil tool. And if you want greater granularity in this, this pencil tool, you can hit Command and it'll make us smaller incremental changes. So you can just, whatever, draw something like that. Just like that, and then we can duplicate that. Now we have that in our loop. But there's one third and final way that you can do this, which is kind of cool if you have max for live. So I'm going to duplicate this, keep what we did. I'm going to duplicate it. And instead of having the automation, I'm going to delete those. I'm going to show you a different way to use the max for live LFO device to do the same thing. So if we go to max for live, Max audio effect LFO. Bring that in. And now this just creates a running LFO that we can map to that detune amount. So here it is. Hit map, detune, and there we go. We can slow, probably want to slow this down some and maybe create a little bit of jitter so it's kind of off, off kilter. Maybe something like that, see how that sounds. So that's kind of cool and you can play around with that. But I kind of liked the automated one that I did better. Um, and then again, you can record in your changes using a mini knob by mapping this detune parameter to that knob on the keyboard. So let's hear that in context. Okay, and let's compare it to the original that we had. So it's obviously real subtle, but I think you can tell you can tell a difference there. And then again, we can go in and we can change the automation, we can refine it and make it exactly what we're looking for. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this trick about making your percussion loops that are too rigid, a little more lazy and offbeat. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and we'll talk to you next time. All right.